Hi, and welcome to section two of chapter zero. And we're going to start off with FOIL. Now, we have to be careful with FOIL because FOIL is an acronym for remembering multiplying two binomials together. And it can only be used for two binomials. Well, first of all, what is a binomial? A binomial is something that looks like this. It has two terms in parentheses. So that would be a binomial. Now, when we multiply binomials by using FOIL, FOIL is an acronym, first, outer, inner, last. So the first terms in the two binomials, so the first terms would be the two x's. And so I'm going to draw an arrow connecting them. Whoops, kind of missed my other x, but it's going to be x squared. Next, is the outer terms, the outer terms of the two binomials. So here is the outside term and here is an outside term because they're both outside of the binomials. Again, that was a bad arrow, but when you multiply them together, be careful, it is in positive x times a negative five, so it is a negative five x. And then as we go down the line, the inner terms, this is inside and that is also inside the whole big picture. So 3 times x is 3x. And then finally, the last terms in the binomial, we have a positive 3 and a negative 5. So we multiply those together to give us a negative 15. Now the very left, last step that we have to do is combine all like terms. Well, we have just 1x squared. Now we have a negative 5x and a positive 3x. When you combine them, it's going to give us a negative 2x. And then, very last, we have negative 15. Whoops, so when using FOIL, that is going to be our final answer. So let's jump into some examples. Let me switch my pen. So here we go, FOIL. First, we have Q squared. Outer, now we go from this guy all the way to the last guy to give us plus 2Q. Now we have inside, which is plus 5q. And then last is there, so it's going to be plus 10. But we have to simplify what are like terms. The two middle terms are the same q, so we have q squared plus 7q plus 10. Next. Our first terms, we take this x times that x. What are the first two terms in each binomial? The x's. So we multiply to get x squared. The outer terms, the outer terms of the whole binomial, x times 4, so it's negative 4x. Then see inside terms of the binomial, negative 3x. Make sure we are paying attention to those signs in front or to the left of the numbers. And then finally our last terms, which is negative 3 times negative 4 a negative times a negative turns into a positive 12 again combine like terms our like terms are in the middle we are left with x squared minus 7x plus 12 number three first terms now we have a 2t and a 3t so we have to be careful here we have to make sure we multiply the numbers that are in front of the letters and multiply them to each other. So 2 times 3 is 6t, and remember that is squared. Then we go our outer terms, 2t times a positive 4, so that's going to be positive 8t. Now our inside terms, which is plus 9t, and our last terms, which is 3 times 4, which is 12. Simplify. There are no other t squared terms, so it's 6t squared, but there are two, there are two t terms, eight and nine of them, so we add those together to get 17t plus 12 to round it up. Jumping to number four, again, first term in each binomial. Take p times 7p to get 7p squared. Then our outer terms, p times a negative two, so it's negative 2p. Make sure we're paying attention to that negative sign in front of the two. Then our inside terms, 5 times 7p, which is going to be plus 35p. And then finally, our last terms, 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Simplify, there is only one p squared term. 
and there are two p terms. There's a p here, there's a p there. Paying attention to our signs, this is a plus 35p and a negative 2p. We combine those, or we add them together, to get a plus 33p, and bring down our minus 10. Two more. These are a special case of multiplying two binomials, but we can handle these the same way with FOIL. So we multiply our first two terms to get t squared. Then we multiply our outside terms to get a plus 5t. Then we have to multiply the inside terms to get a negative 5t, paying attention to the signs, and our last terms to get a negative 25. Now we combine. We have the only t squared term. Now we combine our t's together, but now it's a positive 5t and a negative 5t. And so that's plus 0t, bring down the negative 25. And one more step. Do we really need this 0t term? No, we do not because 0 times anything is 0. So it's just t squared minus 25. And this is completely the right answer. If this makes sense to you, that's great. There's a step that we can skip. If you don't feel comfortable skipping any step, then write it all out. Use FOIL to its extreme. But if you notice that we have two terms that are the same exact thing, except one's positive, one's negative, you can multiply the first two terms together and then the last two terms together. So if we would just... If I would have noticed that we have the same two binomials, except one's negative, one's positive, I would have just went t times t, which would have gave me would have given me t squared, and negative five times positive five is negative twenty-five. And so I would have been done right there and I could have skipped those two steps. Six. Kind of the same way, but now we have the same binomial. So I'm gonna try foil first. So I have t squared. And then I have plus 5t. Then my inside terms is another plus 5t. And then lastly, I have plus 25. Simplified, that gives me t squared plus 10t plus 25. FOIL with two binomials will always give you the right answer. But a shortcut, if you realize it, if you have the same two binomials, you could have taken t times t, which would have given you t squared. If you would have doubled this number to give you 10, tack a t on it. So whatever this number would have been, if it would have been a 6, you would have had a 12 here. If it would have been an 8, you would have had 16 here. And then you still multiply those two numbers together, the last two numbers together, to give you 25. So you could have gotten this answer a couple different ways. And finally, now for everybody's favorite word problem. Now I have my own room. It is 5 feet wider and 10 feet longer than Mr. Skinner's room. I don't know if those dimensions are actually correct. I'm just guessing. So first thing we're going to do is write an expression for the dimensions of the new room. Well, if I'm talking about width right now, I don't care that it's 5 feet wider, but I do care that my width is labeled x. So width, we're talking x. And length, we're going to talk, it's five feet longer, is going to be my y. So let's write an expression for the dimensions of the room. Well, my width is x. I don't know what my room is, but I know that it's five feet wider than Mr. Skinner's. So I'm going to say x plus five because x represents my room. And then the five, this five represents how much longer it is than Mr. Skinner's. And then I am going to say that y is my length. And how much longer is my length than Mr. Skinner's? Well, it's plus 10. So there's my expression. <clears throat> now I'm going to write a polynomial expression for the area of my room. So now I'm just going to use FOIL to multiply this out. Just because there's two different variables, that's fine. We can still do it. So we have xy. Then we have x times 10, which is 10x. Then we have plus 5y. And then our last terms is plus 50. Now, there's my polynomial expression. 
Now for the last part. Mr. Skinner's room is 20 feet by 30 feet. How much larger will Mr. Litke's room be? Now, I could just take 20 feet, which is the width. What, what is my width up here? And plug it in for that x. I could take 30 and plug it in for that y and come up with some answers that I can move around. But instead of doing that, I'm going to plug those numbers in this expression. 20 is going to be in for my x. 30 is going to go in for my y. So I'm just going to rewrite that equation right here. I'm replacing the x's with 20. I'm replacing the y's with 30. Now, I'm going to add this all up and I'm going to put it down here so I have 600 plus 200 plus 150 plus 50. Get your handy dandy calculator or just add it in your head. You figure out that it is 1,000. So my room is 1,000 square feet. But that's not what the question is asking. The question is asking how much larger is my room compared to Mr. Skinner's room. So my room is 1,000 square feet. See if I can circle it right here. Well, then we have to figure out how long is or how big is Mr. Skinner's room. Well, it tells me that Mr. Skinner's room is 20 by 30. How do I figure out the area? I just have to take 20 times 30, and that's going to give me 600. If his room is 600, my room is 1,000, what do we have to do with those two measurements? We have to subtract them to get... 400, so my room is 400 square feet bigger than Mr. Skinner's. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great rest of the day.